we present all my island people say We people celebrating all it from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother lyrical Straight from the crew out to the blue We represent the voices of my ancestors calling And I was getting more than my culture is falling Now we have a step up for the past 20 scholars No one can stop, ain't nobody gonna stop us People, everybody, would you listen to us for a start? No boy complaining and then that's we partaking We represent the cause Previously on Delos, we island hop through the beautiful waters of Thailand, find a hidden cave, and go on a search for Leonardo de Cappuccino. Look, they shrimp! They light up when they're agitated! Come! So this is what I found the other day. So that is not very good. We're supposed to leave to cross the Indian as soon as possible and start heading for the Andamans. Get me down slowly, slowly, please. <laughs> I've been up on that one about two dozen times. Is it rusted or corroded or? Brownish. Yeah. You don't feel comfortable going up on it? No, I don't feel comfortable to be on the island up there. Okay. Uh, in my opinion is uh, oh, that you should do something before, before going to South Africa. And you don't see any evidence of things that are no I don't see I don't see any failed. crack because usually well you, you start to have the failure crack here on this page and then is that yeah. indicative of rust inside yeah, and strands well, starting to let's say that's the, that's the ultimate the, the it's ultimate. like holy shit <laughs> okay because yeah. fundamental you have yeah. you have so much pressure inside that it's it's splitting the switch and, and the rust and the yeah. corrosion inside causes yeah. the pressure so I mean, the rig obviously needs to replace at some point. It's at just, some point. It's just a tough decision yeah. whether to do it now or in South Africa because, for me. Yeah. And the main the main reason is is the timing. Yeah. Well, you fundamentally, know, yeah, it's getting a little bit a little bit close. If you want to cross, fundamental, you have to cross it now. But I also don't want to cross if you know we're going well. to get into trouble somewhere or. Um, just a moment, so. Hello. Rigging boats. I think it'd be like at least a month setback. Maybe two months. And the boat would have to come out of the water again, which means all the bottom paint work we just did was for nothing. And it's twenty thousand dollars that I don't have. <laughs> Look, have a second opinion. That's what I may suggest. I don't know that that was the best value for twelve hundred ringgit that I've ever spent. <laughs> yeah. Why do you say that? I don't. I. I just don't feel that he was as thorough as he could. I think I do have more, I spend more time up the rig looking at everything and checking the welds and checking the cracks and the pins. And he did barely, I had to ask him to look at the, the backstays. I was like, do you want to look at the backstays? Oh, I might as well. I was like, yeah, you should. But none of them are showing signs of failure, which is good. There's no cracks, there's no broken strands, there's no broken pins or anything like that. So we really didn't trust the inspection 100%. He even got the boat name wrong on the report. So that is not very good. We're supposed to leave across the Indian 
as soon as possible and start heading for the Andamans. But so it just it really pisses me off that you know we paid a guy to come out to the boat. We paid him a lot actually, like 1,200 ringgit, which is about 300 and over 300 US dollars to do a thorough rig inspection. He looked at a few things on the port side. He didn't hardly look at anything on the starboard side. And this is what we wanted to find. And it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, once he heard that the, the age of the rig was a certain age, it was done. He just kind of made up his mind and was, that was yeah. it. But you know, if we would have found that, then we could have made we a decision, decision, we could have started making long plans time to replace everything earlier, so it's, you know, it sucks. But it is what it is, and that's what a broken strand looks like. Yep, so we've got to head to Phuket and change our plans and get it sorted, because we can't cross an ocean like that. It was already almost the end of February, and the weather window for crossing the northern Indian Ocean was slowly closing. The Northern Indian Ocean doesn't have trade wind conditions like the Pacific or the Atlantic. Instead, it is ruled by the monsoons. From November to about April, the breeze comes out of the northeast, making a passage west easy. But after April, the monsoon switches and the breeze comes from the southwest, the exact direction we needed to go in order to cross the equator and make our way to South Africa. So just like that, our plans had changed. Instead of leaving for the Andaman Islands in the next seven days, it looked like we might not leave for another two months, if at all. We immediately set sail for Phuket and began to research our options. We're about to leave our nice calm anchorage and go sailing. So we don't know what's out there. Start again! Just say we get in the boat ready because we go to sleep. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So we're about to go sailing and leave our anchorage. So it's time to get the boat ready. We've got Karen putting away the wind scoop. We gotta put all the dive gear away. Hey, get him boat ready. Wind and fire broke me free. My teeth rock tumbling into the sea. Checking the oil? From rock to stone, 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 rock to stone. Get in the boat ready. Get my body ready. How's your rest? Sucks. I feel like I'm about to go f***ing bowling. I was snowboarding over New Year's. And I fell on it. And it bent back like that. And it didn't really hurt. But over the past couple months it's gotten bad and it hurts. And I can't put any pressure on it like that. I can't bend it that way. Yes! Too proud. Here we go. From rock to stone, rock to stone, rock to stone. Rock to stone, rock to stone, rock to stone. Turn this, this is the alcohol. So you're gonna turn that at the same time that you're unfurling. This is tightening it though, right? Yep. So that's pulling the sail out. And this one is unfurling it from the mast. So you have to do it at the same time. Shall we compare? 
Have we done well? How long has it been? I don't know. I haven't shaved my legs since I got to the bar. Yeah, so one month, I think. Yeah, we're doing good. On the way to Phuket, we spotted a fishing boat that seemed to be collecting a lot of jellyfish. We couldn't pass up the opportunity to go talk to these dudes. Is it is it for food? Yeah. And then what you do you dry? Dry in the sun? You lay on. Sorry. <laughs> no English. No, no. no. Okay. Who really knows why these guys were catching so many jellyfish? Because of the language barrier, we couldn't be sure it was for food. It turns out, jellyfish aren't just dried and eaten these days. They are used in a huge variety of products, including cosmetics, paper towels, diapers, tampons, and even male enhancement supplements. It's kind of hard to, to know what's sustainable because like there's jelly everywhere, right? Yeah. But it depends if they in this area have a lot of that one and yeah, it doesn't matter if they pick like, I don't know, like, because they might pick like thousands a day. Yeah, I mean, they probably had like a thousand in there, right? Yeah. It was quite a lot in that boat. I guess taking anything in that quantity is really bad for the yeah. environment, but it's hard not to be like, you know, what are you doing taking stuff from the ocean? But we have no idea their culture and yeah. no idea what they use them for. Yeah, because he, he said that they chopped it off. Something chopped it off and threw it back in. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. yeah. All right, so we've got two missions today. Mission number one, we have to go check into Thailand because we left Langkawi like two weeks ago and we've kind of been cruising through Thai waters so we need to get that sorted out. And mission two, we need to figure out a way to measure these stays. I think our longest one is about 18 meters and we only have like a three meter tape measure so we're gonna seek out a hardware store and try and find a way to get good measurements that we can get to the riggers so we can get a quote for new rigging. Read this warning from the earth. Honor this world. Place of birth. So Thailand actually has a pretty cool system. They've got an electronic system which I've never seen before. So you just go online, you fill out like the yacht forms, and then you go to immigration, customs, and the harbor master, and they're all in one place. So it's pretty sweet. Three days on a very funny moon today. Yeah, she's, she's trying to tickle me because that's the only time when I get panic, like I really panic from it, then I laugh in a specific way. And she thinks it's so fun. So she's like, right now she's like, I'm gonna do it when you least expect it. Alright, that's it. We've got our clearance papers and we're now legally in Thailand. Nice job, everybody. How does everybody feel about this? Okay. Whole families gathered. We have 30 days to get our shit done and go. <laughs> so while the others headed off to the market for some much needed provisions, Brian and I rented a cute little scooter and headed off to the hardware store. So we totally spaced out, forgot to film anything in the store, but we scored. We got a 30 meter fiberglass tape for measuring the stays. Mm. 
missions for the day complete. The others did some awesome provisioning, and it was Mexican night on Delos. Mm -mm -mm. So good. So after our research online, we headed to the local sailmaker, Rolly Tasker, to check out their rigging department. After meeting with David, the manager of the rigging department, we realized we actually had three options for solving our rigging dilemma. Option one, measure the stays and order them pre-swaged from France. Cost, 10,000 US dollars. Time, up to two months. Option two, use a professional rigger and have a team of guys handle all of the work. Cost, $16,000. Time, three to six weeks. And option number three, pull a do-it-yourself Delo style and use the facilities at Rolly Tasker, but do all of the manual labor ourselves. Cost, $10,000. Time, anywhere from one week to never. After deciding which one of those options to go with, we had to choose whether we were going to take the mast out by crane and do the work on solid ground, which would have cost us another $600, or leave the mast up and change the stays in sections. What is going on? Well, we had a good meeting with one of the riggers yesterday. So we're, we're looking at six weeks from now if we order it, I think versus if we just do it here, then two weeks. I think we could have it done in a week. Yeah. From like, you know, starting because we start tomorrow, right? We say yeah. David, let's do it. We start tomorrow. We get the four stain everything into them. And it's almost the same price. I mean it's more work on our part. Yeah, yeah, but that's all good. Like it, but I think it'd be cool to like have a hand in making the fittings and the swages and all that. Yeah. So you mean the option of the dude that you met yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And um, it sounds pretty promising so far. So the next step is to head to a marina where we can inspect the forest day because the forest day is the big question if we can get the foil apart. So we've got to get Delos into somewhere where it's not moving around and where we can get off the boat with the dock next to us so we can lay the foil and stuff out. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to get going, get started. What are you doing in the hole, Brion? Ah, oh, the air conditioning stopped working and we're about to head into a marina tomorrow, so it's like crucial that the AC works. So I think it's the coolant water pump, so I'm going to start testing that and see if the motor's f or if it's an electrical problem. Yeah, so it looks like there's no voltage at the motor. I tested it with like three different meters just to make sure. So the next thing is to check. There's a, like a relay system over here that connects all the AC units to a relay that then turns on the, the water coolant pump. So maybe something happened with that relay, maybe. So the relay is all good? Well, I found a blown fuse and I replaced it and it just blew again, so. Oh, shit. That pump's just got to be drawing way too much current, so I'll have to take that out and see what's wrong with it. Never easy. All right, got this beast out. I couldn't tell if that was sweat or water because you've been in a sauna. It's a little mixture of both. <laughs> Gross. Okay, let's take this f up. So rusted. <laughs> well, I think we oh, well, that's, found, found that's the a, problem. That's a problem. There's not the motor's not supposed to be full with water. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just using a little brake cleaner here to get all the rusty bits out. Drive some of the moisture out of there. 
stuff works pretty good to clean and then it evaporates leaving no residue behind so it's pretty cool. But the magnets and everything's in pretty good shape, isn't it? Yeah. So we're on our way to the Royal Phuket Marina to start the rigging work. And it's a pretty shallow little channel. We've got like about a meter <coughs> under us, which is all right. We had to wait for high tide to sneak in here. But hopefully we'll get in without hitting the bottom and start some work. It's a weird channel. It's not like a channel with markers on either side. It's just these posts on the port side. and You gotta stay kind of close to them, but far enough away. And they kind of go and then wrap around this corner but it's really, really shallow around here. This place looks really funny. Looks like a resort. This is the yacht party. Yacht party and a tourist party. Step outside. She's waiting. I want that one. Which one? That one. Yeah. Hope you find a place to grow. To grow. Next up on Delos, we learn a lot about rigging as we try and change it ourselves. Beer and a pickle sandwich. A pickle sandwich? Karen prepared. Welcome to the world, here is what we know, hope you find a place to grow, to grow. what we know hope you find a place to 